Welcome to the King's Corner. I am the King Fan Man, and today we're going to leave the dull and bland normal life behind and take a trip into the crazy and zany wastes of Fallout as we look back on seven quirky quests from the Fallout series. Now these will only be taken from Fallout 3, Fallout 4, and Fallout New Vegas. We may look at Fallout 1 and 2 in another video. Obviously there will be some spoilers, but I'll stay away from main quest spoilers. With all that said, let's jump right in. I thought I'd start our list today with a popular quest from Fallout 3 called the Superhuman Gamut. It begins when you enter into the town of Canterbury Commons. You come upon a very quirky scene. Ants fighting robots. And if that's not weird enough, you then see someone dressed like an ant. And another person dressed kind of like a robot. I would definitely call that quirky. Well, it turns out the one that's dressed like an ant is a woman named Tanya who has lost all confidence in the goodness of humanity. So her solution is to kill and destroy everyone and everything with her ant army. No, that's not crazy at all. The one dressed as a robot turns out to be a man named Scott who calls himself the Mechanist. Now he has good intentions in the beginning. He wants to stop the Ant Agonizer and her army of ants but he builds a dangerous army of robots and they become more dangerous to the town than the ants. Your job in this quest is simple. Stop both of them and save the town. Now you do have several choices in the quest. You can try to talk them out of their fighting or you can just kill them quick and outright. You can even join the mechanist and be his sidekick. This quest was so quirky and memorable that the theme, The Mechanist, was used as an entire DLC in the game Fallout 4. Number two on our list comes from Fallout New Vegas and is one of my very favorite quests of any Fallout. It is titled, Come Fly With Me. It begins when you're sent to Repcom. You meet Jason, a ghoul, who is the leader of a religious group who wants to leave the wasteland behind with all of its violence and problems. And they are working on a way to go to the place called the Far Beyond. They believe the Creator has called them to embark on a great journey and you now get the chance to either help them make this journey come true or sabotage them in a terrible way. During this quest, you are forced to face and defeat invisible demons. Wait a minute. Invisible demons? Isn't that the wrong game? No, really. You get to fight invisible demons. Well, Jason and his group think they are demons. They are really something called Nightkins, a rare form of super mutant who have mutated after prolonged use of stealth boys. Now, in the end of this quest, Jason and his group blast off in their rocket ships headed for who knows where, but they think it's the far beyond. Or you can decide to sabotage the rockets by pouring sugar bombs in the fuel tank. And you can watch as the rockets crash and blow up in spectacular fashion. Number three on our list comes from Fallout 4 and the Nuka World DLC and is called Trip to the Stars and it has a lot of similarities with the quest we just talked about from Fallout New Vegas. While searching Nuka World, you will come across another group, another cult-like group, named the Hubologist, because they are followers of a man named Dick Hubble. Now this group believes that they have found the secret answers of life and the ability to find true peace and happiness of the mind. Just like Jason and his group from Fallout New Vegas, this group also has a grand plan to fix up a spaceship and fly it off, well, somewhere. You get the chance to go and fetch them spacesuits and to fix their ship, but you also get a chance to go with them on their journey. Only problem is their ship is a 200-year-old amusement park ride. Now, even though the final journey is short, this quest is very unique, fun, and it is certainly quirky. Number four on our list also comes from Fallout 4, and it's one I'm sure most of you are aware of. 
The Last Voyage of the USS Constitution. Now this one comes from the base game, not a DLC. While wandering through the waste of Boston, you come across a very strange sight. An old ship, and I do mean old. This ship is not 200 years old from the Great War, but it goes back far beyond to the Revolutionary War and the 1700s. It is the USS Constitution, which by the way is a real ship that is in Boston today. Now the age of this ship is not the strangest thing. First of all, the ship is on the land and not in the water. Second of all, the ship is on top of a building and not on the ground. And third of all, there are thruster rockets on the side of the ship. I've never seen a ship like that before. When you make your way to the top of the building and enter the ship, you see yet another strange thing. The crew of the ship is made up entirely of various kinds of robots. You get to meet the captain, who is a robot, whose name is Captain Ironsides, which by the way is another name for the real USS Constitution. Captain Ironsides asks for your help to get the ship unstuck and back to sailing. You again have the choice of either helping or sabotaging this mission. After some more going and fetching, if you choose to help, you get a huge surprise. When the thrusters fire and the ship begins to move, it doesn't go to the water which is inside of the building. Instead, it takes to the air, higher and higher in the air. And as you watch the ship soaring higher, further away, you think it's going to fly out of sight. But instead, it hits the very top of the tallest building in Boston. And once again, the USS Constitution rests motionless atop a skyscraper overlooking Boston. Now this concludes the quest, the flight of the USS Constitution. But you also have the opportunity to travel up this skyscraper and again, go to the ship. When you get there, you might think that the robots would be upset, but they're not. In fact, they applaud you as a hero for your help. And in part, you are awarded the Captain's Cabin as a new player home for your heroics and help in getting the ship this far on its journey. Number five on our list comes from Fallout 3 and is one of the most memorable quests of any Fallout. It is called Tranquility Lane. It begins deep inside Vault 112. Now, I won't say why you're there to keep from giving away any spoilers on the main quest of Fallout 3. Really? Is there really someone out there that hasn't played through Fallout 3 yet? Okay then, this is your encouragement. Play through Fallout 3. So I won't tell you the whys, but I will say you enter a room full of these things called pods. Memory pods from Fallout 4 are loungers, as they're called in Fallout 3, and you're instructed to enter one. Now all of these pods have people in them. Why are they there? How long have they been there? Are they trapped? Once you enter the pod and it's activated, your mind is transported to a small, peaceful suburb called Tranquility Lane. Once there, you meet a little girl named Betty, a creepy, I mean sweet little girl, who wants to play a game. Wait a minute, this kind of sounds like the start of a horror movie. You try to get Betty to help you on your mission, which is full of spoilers, so I won't say any more but she refuses to help unless you play her games. This creepy look, I mean sweet little girl's game consists of escalating acts of violence, such as making a little boy cry, breaking up a marriage, and even killing an old lady. In her final game, she wants you to kill everyone in Tranquility Lane, which if you do it, it will in turn kill everyone that is hooked up to the memory pods. To conclude this quest, you have the choice to try to be good and free the trapped people in the pods of their torment, or you can choose to be very, very bad. Whether it's the black and white setting of Tranquility Lane, the creepy little, I mean sweet little girl Betty, or the tough choices in the end, something makes this quest very memorable and certainly very quirky. Number six on our list comes from Fallout 3 and is titled Oasis. 
To begin this quest, you first speak to a man named Father Birch, who belongs to the group, another cult-like group, the Tree Minders. Oh, Father Birch. Birch is a tree. The Tree Minders. Clever. You follow him inside the gate, and you discover the place Oasis. It is beautiful compared to the wasteland, because it's green. No, not the sky, like the whole rest of the capital wasteland. Wow, what a beautiful green sky we're having today. Uh, no. The green of the oasis is from foliage, living plants and trees. Wow, that is a nice change from the rest of the wasteland, for sure. Once inside the oasis, Father Birch starts telling you about the God Tree. Wait, did I hear that right? God Tree? Yep, that's what he said. Father Birch and his group actually take care of and worship this tree. Before you can go see the tree, they make you do something called a Ceremony of Purification. Once you complete it, you get to go meet the God Tree, Harold. Harold is his name, and he's actually a character from earlier Fallout games. He is in both Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. So how did Harold become a tree? Well, it's a long story, but the quick version is he became a ghoul in Fallout 1 because of an accident and an experiment in a military base, and then in Fallout 2 he shows up with a tree named Bob growing out of his head. That is pretty quirky. Now we don't know how Bob got in his head, but we do know that Harold is not really a tree. Bob is the tree, and Bob has grown around Harold, so Harold is stuck in Bob. Does that make sense? Hey, I didn't say they made sense. I just said they were quirky. As you talk to Harold, you find out that he is miserable. And you too would be miserable if you were stuck in Bob the tree. He asks you to do him a special favor. He wants you to kill him. To do this, you have to journey far beneath the tree down to his roots where his heart is. You now have the chance to kill Harold like you wanted you to by crushing his heart, or you can keep him alive, and there's a couple of ways you can do that. One way is you can put some kind of liniment on his heart, which will accelerate his growth. If you make this choice, it will help the wasteland to grow plants and trees. A third option is you can keep him alive, but not put the liniment on him, like Father Birch wants you to, and not let him influence the rest of the wasteland. Father Birch doesn't think the wasteland is worthy of Harold's gift. If you do decide to keep Harold alive, if your speech is high enough, he will understand and not be angry with you. What a crazy quest, and certainly not one I'll forget anytime soon. That brings us to number seven, and the last one on our list. It comes from Fallout New Vegas and the DLC Honest Hearts. The quest name is Rite of Passage, and this is a quick, quirky one. While exploring the Narrows, you will meet the Sorrows Tribe and the Chief White Bird. Very quickly, you notice something strange about everyone in the tribe. They are all wearing a large bear claw on one hand. Well, cool. That's not strange at all. How can I get me one of those cool bear claws? Glad you asked. All you have to do is fetch some roots, drink some tea, and then go find and kill the Ghost of She, which is a terrifying bear. That sounds easy enough though, right? Well, that's until you drink the tea, and it's drugged, and then you find the bear, and it's on fire. And then you find that there's four bears on fire. Well, maybe I don't really need a bear claw after all. That will do it for our list and the seven quirky quests from the Fallout series. And that don't even scratch the surface of the craziness that is the Fallout waste. Maybe that's why we like Fallout so much. Thanks for stopping by the King's Corner today. Be sure and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, and I always love and appreciate new subscribers. I am the King Fan Man. See you next time.